Good day, everybody. Jewel here with your tropical, severe, and general forecast. I will have a complete tropical update later today. But right now, we're going to combine it all in one. And today, of course, is the 19th of August, 2020. It's Wednesday, and here we go. This picture was sent in by Pamela Kelly. Thank you, Pamela. She's up in uh, southern New Jersey. She said it was a beautiful sunny day, and all of a sudden, this happened. As you can see, these storms pop up right out of the blue. That's why I tell you guys to make sure, when you see the skies start doing this, make sure you have a safe place to go. Thank you, Pamela, for sending this in. Now, as we check out with the National Hurricane Center, what's going on in the tropical condition areas? Well, this morning we've got another one. I told you guys this was going to come off. And after this one, well, there's going to be another one. That may be the biggest one yet. But let's just start with what we've got, of course. This right here is disturbance number one. It's 97L, okay? Now, before I read what they say. I want to tell you the winds are 35 miles per hour in it. It's not a tropical storm yet. Now, the pressure is 29.77 inches, and it's it's moving, still moving, as you can see, and I had one of my subscribers say, Jewel, I like the old stuff you do that shows the pictures. Well, you know what? The models are not in agreement. You can't go by one particular model and I can't show you 50 different models because <laughs> they're not in agreement. One or two are, but I'll tell you, it's not the European. It's not the GFS. It's not anything that you guys usually look at. So let's just go with this for right now. This is still a tropical wave. It's located over the eastern Caribbean Sea. It's producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms along with gusty winds and these thunderstorms. Now, some gradual development of this system is possible over the next day or so. It's moving westward at about 15 to 20 miles per hour across the central Caribbean Sea. After that time, the wave is forecast to move more slowly west-northwestward and a tropical depression is likely to form late this week or maybe this weekend when the system reaches the northwestern Caribbean Sea. Now, in two days, it's 40%. In five days, it's 80%. Now, 98L will probably form before this one does, okay? So, that's what it's looking like. It, I'm going to show you some models that are all the models that are run. I can't go every little one and pick it out, but I'm going to give you a general idea of what I think is going on. Now, disturbance number two. Disturbance number two will probably turn into Laura. Will probably turn into Laura. It's still elongated, though. Still just an elongated area of low pressure. It's a little over a 1,000 miles east of the Windward Islands, and it continues to produce a concentrated area of showers and thunderstorms, mainly on the west side of the disturbance. Now, environmental conditions are conducive for further development, and a tropical depression is expected to form during the next day or two, while this system moves generally west-northwestward at 15 to 20 miles per hour across the central and western portions of the tropical Atlantic. Now, in two days and five days, it has a 90% chance of forming. Now, like I said, later this evening, I will have nothing but a complete tropical update. And, of course, we got something brand new down here to look at, right? One little, two little, three little systems. I used to sing that song when I was a kid, except it was engines. Now, <laughs> this is disturbance number three. It's a large area of showers and thunderstorms. It's located over Guinea and Sierra Leone, Africa. It's associated with a vigorous tropical wave. Environmental conditions are expected to be marginally conducive for some development of this system while this wave enters the extreme eastern Atlantic on Friday. But I've done a little checking, and this is exactly what it's looking like is going to happen by early next week. 
the conditions look like they're going to become less favorable for tropical cyclone formation while it moves west-northwestward at 15 to 20 miles per hour toward the central tropical Atlantic. It's zero in two days, 20% in five days, but it's still worth watching. After this one, another one's going to come up and come off up here that's going to be rather big. This is some of the tracking models. Now, this is for 97L. I do believe that this is very accurate so far. Looking like, as you can tell, we'll come down here a little bit. You can see down around Aruba. There's Jamaica. You're looking pretty clear right now. But once again, we don't know. It's too early. It hasn't formed yet. We have to just watch this. Now, when it comes up here, this is looking pretty accurate. It may be jogged just a little more to the east right on the tip here, or it may not. It may stay this way. I do believe these tracks right in here are a pretty good indication of where it might go. This one and also this one. One over into Texas, and who knows, it might come even a little farther south here. Wherever most of the models are gathered together is the best pathway that it probably would take. So it could come up in this area like I was showing you really early on in this particular system that was making up. Or it may go over here. Or who knows, it may go over here. When we look at the intensity on this, I just want to show you guys something. Do you see how many intensity maps and models there are there's no way i can show you everything for everything but it does look like that some of them now this is a ship model here okay see it's green it's giving it the most chance for being a high-end tropical storm most of them where they're cluttered up together for the most part it's looking like right in here and this over here is the wind, so it's looking like maybe a tropical storm, okay? 40 to 50 mile per hour winds for the most part. It may reach that, it may not. Time will tell. We have to wait and see. Just remember, none of this is road in stone. It Remember, this can always change, and it probably will. I'm just showing you what it looks like as of right now. This is 98L as we go down to the island areas, you can see. They are very tightly compacted as you move up in the northern part, north of uh, Barbuda, moving up through the island area here, over parts of De uh, Dominican Republic here. Most of them, it's just a big chain. It could go anywhere in here. Haiti. Looks like the worst of it at this point with the models will be just a little north of Cuba, moving on up. Now, some models, as you see, have it going in the Gulf. This remains to be seen. We've got to still wait and see if it does make up the way it looks like it's going to now. And a lot of it have it going up into Florida here, as you can see. So far as intensity goes, the ship models are always a little higher because they're out in the water, right? But when you get the tightly compacted models right in this area here, as you can see, some of these have it as a tropical storm. Then we have a few more up in this area that have it maybe as a Cat 1 hurricane. Time will tell. That's all we have to go by as of now. I'm not going to show maps. I'm not going to draw lines. I'm not going to talk about dry air or wind shear or any of that stuff. This is just what it's looking like right now. Now, as we look at the severe weather today, before I get going, I want to say, everybody, please keep all of those people in Iowa where the derecho went through in your prayers. It's estimated, this isn't, a, this isn't wrote in stone figure, but it's estimated that $11.2 billion worth of economical damage occurred during that derecho that happened a few days ago. Well, that means our food crops, folks. So just be aware of that. Prices are going to go up 
on many, many things. Plus, these people are still without power. So many thousands of people are still without power today. As we look at the categorical outlook for today, we do have some isolated, strong, to locally severe wind gusts that's going to be possible with in this large arch shape area from portions of Idaho and southwestern Montana. See where this little arch is right in here? Where it goes up like this and comes down? This is where we could have these strong storms with severe wind gusts. Now, this is also going to be in parts of southwestern Montana and eastward into parts of South Dakota and Nebraska. Southward across the central and southern high plains and westward to the southern Arizona area where you can see right in here a few strong storms may also spread across the Arrowhead area of Minnesota. Anywhere it's green, pop up thunderstorms. With any of these thunderstorms, expect thunder, expect cloud to ground lightning, and you could have some downdraft winds. It just depends. So don't rule any of that stuff out. Just watch your skies and stay safe. So far as tornado activity, it's less than 2% today. But when it does come to the wind, I have a feeling this arch area right in here, this is going to be the most severe from Idaho, from Wyoming, going down into Colorado, maybe parts of northeastern New Mexico. You can see how it twirls around. It's 5% there, the arrowhead of Minnesota, and also in Arizona. And you can see right here, here it is all laid out for you once again. If you haven't subscribed, please do so if you're into severe weather, general forecast, tropical weather. I always try to put up in where the most important things are in my daily forecast when I do them so you know what's going on and you can stay safe. Once again, click subscribe, click the bell, check off all. Please subscribe. I would appreciate it greatly. And also, don't forget, later this evening, I will have a complete tropical update. Here we have the NAM map. This is what's going to happen over the next two to three days. There's your time stamp right here. This map is courtesy of Tropical Tidbits. As I turn it on, this is what's happening. Record heat in the west. It will become less intense. How about that? But the fire danger will progress from the interior northwest toward the central Great Basin. Now, scattered showers and thunderstorms are going to persist for the coming days across the southeastern quadrant of the country. we got a strong mid-upper level ridge of high pressure that is responsible for the recent heat wave across the western U.S. Now, it's forecast to gradually weaken, and this will allow the record heat to continue its slow moderation for the coming days across the region. Nevertheless, record high temperatures are still forecast today for some locations in the Great Basin and remains widespread in the desert southwest. In addition to the heat, you got those dry conditions. They're going to enhance the fire danger, especially for the interior northwestern U.S., where lightning strikes associated with isolated afternoon and evening thunderstorms ahead of the uh, Pacific front could ignite some wildfires. So we have elevated to critical fire danger should then progress toward the central Great Basin on Thursday as the front pushes further to the south and the east. Meanwhile, much of the eastern half of the country will experience cooler than normal temperatures. I've got cooler temperatures at my house, and I'm loving it. hope you do, too. This is all to a persistent upper-level troughing. Now, while mainly fine weather is expected for the plains, the Midwest and Northeast, tropical moisture interacting with a stall front will keep a good chance of these showers and thunderstorms for much of the Southeast. Now, this does include Florida as well as the Mid-Atlantic for the coming days. Now, it appears that the general rainfall totals are not especially heavy 
over these areas. Nevertheless, some locally heavy rain could lead to some flooding concerns in parts of the areas. Now, right down here, you see Hurricane Genevieve coming up. This was a Category 4 yesterday. Today, it is a Category 3. And that's a check of your weather. You have a good day, a safe day, a blessed day. Thanks for everything you do for me, folks. I appreciate it so much, and thank you from the bottom of my heart. Much peace, love, and kindness to each and every one of you. Thanks for watching.